We're at uh, Psalms 8. Psalms 8 today, we said this is one of the Tabernacles hymns that they sing every year for Feast of Tabernacles, the Jews do, that are real Jews. Of course, some of them are Orthodox, some of them are very unorthodox. <laughs> <laughs> and so we see that uh, Psalms 8 is honor God the Creator and His exaltation of man. So the theme of this uh, chapter really is the earth and how that, of course, what a great God we have compared to the earth. So let's read it here real quick, uh, Psalms 8. We'll stand and read it, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, uh, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the sea, the paths of the sea. Uh, o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Thy name in all the earth. Mm. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this great chapter. Help us to appreciate it, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So honor God, the creator, and his exaltation of man. Psalms 8. Amen. So number one, we seek, we're to consider God's majestic name. His name, power, and glory is revealed in all the earth. I love how Psalms 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And... Uh, the Bible, you may remember in chapter, uh, mm. let me look here for a minute, uh, let me see here, let me find my notes, well again, um, When we think of the Lord's, the Bible, of course, the Old Testament, the Jews really had a thing for God's name, didn't they? Yes. yes. They held his name in reverence. They were careful not to use it too often, <laughs> lest they violate the commandment. And um, so it's of some interest that he uh, talked about that here in the first verse and the last verse. Mm -hmm. Because, again, his name is what he's all about, uh, his character. When we think of the character of God and the attributes of his person and his attributes, being all-knowing and uh, omnipotent and omniscient. He knows all things. He's everywhere. And uh, he's omnipresent. So when we think of God being God, what makes him God, but all these characteristics of God, <laughs> amen? And so, since he's the creator who made all things, all the more we owe him our allegiance. And uh, we, we, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Amen. And now, again, I don't know what your Bible has there. But uh, uh, the subtitle in my Bible is to the chief musician up, up, upon Gitteth, a psalm of David, mm -hmm. similar to what the postscript said of chapter 7. But at the conclusion of this chapter, my Bible says to the chief musician upon uh Muthleben. And Muthleben means relating to the death of the champion. So in other words, David had written this psalm 
when he had killed Goliath. So you can kind of maybe get a sense of why then do the Jews sing this every Feast of Tabernacles when they're celebrating Sukkoth and the, putting a tent in the backyard and living in the tent all week, remembering their humble beginnings wandering in the wilderness. And they sing this psalm because it reminds them of David's victory over the giant, Goliath. And uh, <laughs> David wrote it because as the young boy he was, the shepherd boy, amen, that took on the big champion of the Philistines, he gave, he's giving God all the glory and all the credit. Amen. So consider God's majestic name. His name, power, and glory is revealed in all the earth. His glory is above the heavens, and His strength is seen in His choice of the weak children to serve Him that we are. Amen. <laughs> uh, we know, like Paul says in Romans, that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. <laughs> and... Uh, so it's definitely humbling for us to be ambassadors for Christ, like 1 Corinthians uh, speaks of, and 2 Corinthians also. Look at 1 Corinthians one twenty-seven. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Of course, we live in a day where everybody thinks aliens and somehow whatever alien technology is, that that's somehow better and more superior than us. Well, again, if it's so superior, why do they keep coming down here and messing with human men and women? <laughs> and uh, didn't they get it the first time? Why do they got to keep abducting people and doing the same stupid experiments on them? Well, maybe they're not so intelligent. Maybe they're not experiments, and maybe they haven't learned to think because they're not that smart. Uh, Certainly God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Mm -hmm. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Mm -hmm. So we have this genius Michelson-Morley experiment that we're going to put out here uh, back in the 1800s to prove the world's turning and what did it prove? The world's not turning. You know, the world's not turning. And Einstein, oh, I'll come to the rescue of evolution. Uh, maybe just everything's relative and if you were sitting on the moon, it would seem like the moon's the middle of the universe. Everybody said, oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's got to be it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody went nuts over. But then Einstein realized how everybody's gone to seed on this thing and they're still missing the truth that so he had to come out with a second theory of relativity, which says that, oh no, the Bible may 100% be absolutely correct. You know, who yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> no. right. Nobody's quick to point that out, but happily in these last days, a few of us are still pointing it out. Amen. Because yes, because mm -hmm. that's God's business, see, and that's how God delights. God delights, see. God delights in these things because the world thinks it's a bunch of foolishness. Amen. Yeah. Verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Amen. Right, right. And so that's why we're talking today about these great truths of Romans, of, of uh, not just Romans, but Psalms 8. Amen. Mm -hmm. O Lord, our Lord. Amen. Is he your Lord? Right. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. And again, if you want to know excellence, you got to know the book and know God. Right. Amen. If you don't, if you only know the excellence of men, then you don't know much. That's right. <laughs> and that means you're kind of a, probably a capital F for fool. Mm -hmm. So this psalm references the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus as well, and whose name is above every name, amen, and someday he will be ruling and reigning on the earth. Certainly Adam was given the dominion over the world and Adam had it and it was given to Moses and different people had it and they all lost it. But praise the Lord, ultimately Jesus is coming back and he'll claim it. Amen. Amen. Uh, but the Lord will have the literal, physical, visible dominion someday. Amen. Like the book of Revelation says he will. 
and uh, certainly uh, he is worthy to rule and reign should he not receive the reward of his suffering. Amen? And should not the church reflect his glory as the moon reflects the glory of the sun? And then he said in verse 2, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Certainly God often speaks out of the mouth of babes to make fools out of the educated scholars of Alexandria and the Nicolaitans who say there's only us educated people are to be the preachers because we have the sacred duties and we have sacred rights and so forth so on that we can perform it. No, no, no. It's not the doctrine of the Nicolaitans mm -hmm. that the clergy are somehow more holy than the laity and all that baloney that Revelation 2, 6 warns you about. Amen. Right. <laughs> and when truth is declared by the humble mind and spirit, the Lord God receives the glory mm -hmm. and rightfully so. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise, again, notice these characteristics of our God. That's why his name is to be praised and how excellent is his name. Loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness. In the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. <laughs> Amen. See, that's what the, light, the Lord delights in. Do you delight in them? You know, you should. Right. I'd say John MacArthur doesn't. That's why he's a neo-Jesuit. Look at Jeremiah chapter 18. Let's pick it up at verse 7. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it? If that nation against whom I have pronounced... Turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. And at, the, at what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it. If it do evil in my sight, this is why America's in trouble today. Mm -hmm. If it do evil in my sight that it obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. So boy, we are in a heap of trouble as a nation. Mm -hmm. Some people don't know that, see. And so consider God's care for us as, as human beings and as the human race. Amen? Uh, consider the majestic heavens above. Consider how small and frail we are compared to the vastness of space, and yet God cares for us, you know. Like Jesus taught us in the Sermon on the Mount. God's numbered every hair of our head. He knows how many hairs wash down the drain. <laughs> and yet he feeds the birds and the sparrows. And he says, you're worth a whole lot more than sparrows. And yet people give up hope, think the only thing they answer is to commit suicide. Never. No, man. Why not consider God and live for God? Amen. Why despair? And so, David, uh, in writing this psalm, really helps us keep the main thing the main thing. And that's, and again, that's the issue. Mm -hmm. So many churches, they will not and they do not keep the main thing the main thing. They begin minoring on majors and majoring on minors. Right. Until pretty soon you just got a corporate takeover of the church where it's just running and running and running and running on into infinity and beyond. 
because yes, it's just a legal entity and that's all it is. It done lost its real purpose and God's done removed the candlestick, but it's got a name that it's a church because it's in the corporate title, but that's all it is. It's not a church or anything at all by God's standards of the Word of God. It's not even all composed of Bible uh, or baptized believers. Mm-hmm. Anybody can join. It's just another social club. And so, verse 3, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers. <laughs> we know the Bible tells us the care that he made man, he formed out of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. But when we look out in outer space and we see... God's made all these beautiful heavens and it seems like he's still making them. Uh, this is the wonder of astronomy today. You know, we keep building these telescopes. We just can't see far enough. We want to see farther. We want to see farther. We want to see farther. So now we have the James Webb telescope floating around out there in space even. Yeah. This floating around looking further and further than we've never been able to see before. And the reason we can't see very good is you can get a telescope today. You won't see far today. Why? we got fog out there. Well, we got to get above the fog, so we got you know. So, Palomar, what's Mount Palomar in California? Way up above, on top of the mountain, we build these big telescopes, you know, so we can get up above the clouds, see farther, see. But yet, there's still garbage, debris. Never mind all the space junk floating around out there. We keep shooting more and more space junk all the time. So we got to get something further and further out there, see farther, further, further. So now the space, in space, we got this web. Telescope and man, it is picking up some of the most beautiful pictures. But it's just blowing men's minds. They said even right now, here, right here in our own solar system, we have another little solar system, and it says there are six planets. And they said it just blows everybody's mind because it's got its own little sun, and the six planets going around that little sun is all perfect circles. They're all perfect circles. It's not mm-hmm. concentric circles like mm-hmm. the planets that go around our sun. And uh, it just blows their mind because, you know, when they look out there in space, there's some things that make sense, but there's some things that don't make sense. For instance, the the radial arm spirals on most galaxies, you know, it's just like you'd expect it to be. You know, if you take a big paper wad and light it on fire and throw it, does all the fire fly off from where it's traveling through the air? Or does some fire occasionally jump out in front? No, it always follows it. And so, like I was telling the guy, you know, if science had it right, how's the world turning right now? It's turning toward the east. That's why it looks like the sun comes up from the east and sets in the west, right? Okay, if that were really true, then there should be some great wind all the time coming from the east as we're traveling and spinning in space, going to the east. But yet, no, it isn't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, it, in fact, most times it seems to come from the west and then, Occasionally north and south and east winds because the world's sitting perfectly still, boys and girls. And why there is so much weather is based on really because there's the plenum of spaces out there. It's all moving around us, but we're sitting perfectly still. And as that sun's coming around, and like I was telling him, I said, Halley's Comet, every 100 years it comes back. Well, why? What, 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 what's it even coming here for? Everybody knows what's well, the gravity of the sun pulling at it. But because every day it comes over here in the east and sits in the west every cotton picking day, and it's coming for the sun. But guess what? That sun's moving around the earth. Next thing you know, well, Haley's comet misses it again. So here we come. hundred years later, here it comes back. Because <laughs> it's just the way the Bible says it is. Amen? Amen. But not everybody can believe that. So when you look into space, it's awesome. And it makes us more humble. Now notice, very important, do you unwind the works of thy the work of thy fingers? See, it's not evolutionist. It's not evolutionary. It's not evolution. By the works of evolution, the moon and the star. See, that's what it should have said if that were true, but it's not true. It's a lie. Evolution is a lie. Look at Psalms 19 again, just to remind us how David said it. Again, this is the chapter, Betty. If you want to understand what's all going on with space, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. 
his handy, let's talk about his sewing. You know, okay. what woman doesn't know, boy, the backside of a piece of needlework don't look too organized, but boy, the outside looks beautiful. Right. You know, you can have flowers and hummingbirds and you can do all kinds of things. Well, same thing with the Lord. Amen. When you look out there at the, the, the <laughs> stars and them galaxies and it's all his sewing and it's his handiwork. Day and the day utter speech, night and night showeth knowledge. There's no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. You see the lines of God's writing, God's scriptures in the sky. Again, uh, three times, it's right there. Anybody that knows the con constellations knows there's three times. God's got three books in the sky that keeps pushing God and the book and Jesus coming to be the Savior of the world. It's all right there. And we've talked about it many times. But that wasn't good enough. Satan finally tarnished that. So then God had to give us a written word then. So we wouldn't miss it. <laughs> and praise the Lord, he gave us a written word. Hallelujah. Amen. And so now there's no excuse. And that's why on the day of judgment, you'll be judged by the things written in this book. It won't be the stars. <laughs> It'll be the book. And uh, Genesis 2, 7, amen. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So God's breath gave life. Created something from nothing. And so forth and so on. Let's move on. Thirdly, of course, we see consider our exalted position over creation. So what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Now this is a very interesting expression, the son of man, because this is a unique word uh, found uh, three times before this. It's found in Numbers 23, 19, Job 25, 6, and Job 35, 8. Now again, commonly, if you've ever read the works of Lewis, Lewis was big on, C.S. Lewis was big on talking about um, the sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve, and I love that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, let's just keep everything in yes. context. Yes. The sons of Adam and the daughters of Eve <laughs> is what we are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and of course, you know, there's some great things that man wrote. And um, so what is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man? So to think that here God made God, uh, the first man, Adam, directly, but yet all of a sudden Adam bore a little something in his image. Man was made in God's image, but Adam's son was made in Adam's image. And that's what a son of man is, of course. And of course Jesus is ultimately the son of man. Uh, Ezekiel is the first prophet that uses it a lot in his book and then Jesus comes along and calls himself the son of man and so thank God for this last Adam the Bible speaks of Jesus being the last Adam there was the first Adam and then there's the last Adam amen for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels now this is a great point to get yes Man was made lower than the angels. Now, we get pretty bigoty and smart, Alec. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is about every generation that every generation seems to need its own heroes. I'm happy to go back and get these old books of the past and read what these great men and great minds of the past have had to say and give them proper honor to and glory for their discoveries. Like, because they were great men. But... So many clowns in this modern generation, though they think the sun rises and sets on them, that, man, they are just the smartest and they're so smart and, and they're so dumb. They're worse than a box of rocks. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I, I believe Dr. Pete Ruckman was a great man. I'm happy to say I believe in the rapture and a lot of stuff just like he believed because I find it in the same Bible. And yet we got a bunch of upstarts that think that they're even smarter than Dr. Ruckman when it comes to the rapture and stuff. And now they say there is no rapture and stuff. I just say, you're just as dumb as a box of rocks, man. You don't know what you're doing. 
And yet they, they pastor churches, you know, and they're on the computer. Oh, wow. Woo-hoo, I'm real excited. Uh, but God made man lower than the angels. And, and uh, there's beings that, yeah, they can freak you out if they come in your room at night or whatever. That's right. Uh, That's right. That's why they first thing they usually say is don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. That's right. Something comes in your room and you're afraid, and they don't say don't be afraid. You should be, be afraid. afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and God made man a little lower than angels. That's right. So this is all the more reason why I'm looking forward to the death, burial, and resurrection. Because when I come out of that grave someday, I'm going to be just like Jesus, and then I'm going to be made a little better than the angels. The Bible says, Amen. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Finally being made better than the I don't mind being an imperfect preacher at an imperfect church. Right. Right. No, we're not claiming to be perfect, but we got a perfect Savior and a perfect Bible. Isn't that enough? Amen. But man was made a little lower than the angels. Sure, he was given dominion over all these animals and all on the earth, over all these creatures. It's cool. You know, and it was Roger Kipling that made all those great books about Mowgli, you know, and, mm-hmm. and look at Shere Khan in the eye, you know. And, and uh, God crowned man with honor, and he made him ruler over God's creation. Amen? Right. God really did give men dominion. Mm-hmm. Over all the flocks and herds, over all the animals, over all the birds, right. over all fish, over all sea creatures. And that's why it's cool and fascinating to watch these guys, you know, and they're out there catching snakes and wrestling alligators, you know. Mm-hmm. What's that guy, Steve Irwin or something? Finally, a stingray hit him in the, yes, with a barb in his chest and killed him. Yes, sir. But, boy, he was fun to watch, and he sure wasn't afraid to get out there. And all these animals sure seemed to succumb to his will, didn't they? Mm-hmm. He definitely proved that the Lord was right in all of his God's creation that God made. He made us the superiors. And he made us to have dominion. Yeah. We're his kings and queens to run this world. And them creatures know that we're, we're the boss. <laughs> and it's amazing because we know we're not worthy of it. We're lower than angels. Mm-hmm. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And that's why it's humbling. And that's why the greatest advantage of men studying astronomy is more and more men are coming to Christ. The advantage of everybody that studies uh, biology is they're coming to Christ left and right because the smaller they look and go the more they know there has to be a God and they see the design and everything and everywhere and they say whoa there's a designer this didn't come by accident this didn't become of mutations because mutations end up being negative 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 not positive positive and the more they fine-tune look, the more they know there is a God. And it's God who's in charge. And it's God who made man to have dominion. And that's why we can discover this. Things are discoverable. Yeah. All the great scientists were science men of God and men of the Bible. And they knew God wanted them to know the answers. And God gave them the answers. Louis Pasteur and so many. And we thank the Lord for it. And so... As much as we think we're what it's all about, we want to think there is no Bigfoot, there is no UFOs. Sure there is. This is a big universe God made. There's creatures that have been around here for thousands and thousands of years. Mm-hmm. Fallen angels, but angels nonetheless. So of course they can have messed around and messed up, made a lot of stupid stuff and still making stupid stuff that we run into on occasion, whether it's a chubacabra or wendigo, whatever else Indians want to call them. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Amen? A direct quote 
Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things, for he hath put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Mm -hmm. Perfect through sufferings for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one mm -hmm. for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So there's your first John 5 8 right there. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Mm -hmm. So Jesus believes in singing and we sing in church. Mm -hmm. And that's why we sing in church. We just don't have Bible study. <laughs> There's plenty who do just have Bible study. But they ain't no church. They're just a Bible study. Though they might say they're a church. God save me. <laughs> Let's look at Psalm 97. And verse 7. Psalms 97 and verse 7. Hallelujah. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. There's a lot of these. Yes, sir. <laughs> There's a lot of these people that think they're worshiping some god, you know. Mm -hmm. All the ancient First Nation people thought that there's all kinds of different gods that's coming down. That's what they thought Christopher Columbus was because he had a big old white beard, you know. Mm -hmm. Poor Aztecs got taken advantage of because of that false belief too, Amen. And so uh, we're warned in the scriptures. Yes. Pay attention. Because God has made man and placed him here. And that's why Jesus is what it's all about. Hebrews 1, 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. <laughs> and of the angels he saith who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire mm -hmm. angels give the word of God mm -hmm. and angels give instruction and angels give aid and assists, assistance and they give comfort throughout the scriptures like they comforted Jesus yeah. on occasion And so then we see, consider God's purpose. So, you know, you're good luck trying to find some good picture that represents geocentricity anywhere on the internet. <laughs> but happily, we have this old picture of an artist of the ancient times. And of course, you see this on uh, definitely, uh, they use this image on. Uh, uh, the principal movie mm. talking about the Copernican principle and all that. Okay, we live in this universe where it sure looks like it's a fixed earth with the sun going around the earth and the moon going around the earth and the stars going around the earth. But praise the Lord because we believe in God and we know the Bible. And, then, <laughs> and though God has made it like this and it is like this is the way it is, uh, we, look, we can look beyond God's creation on an opportunity, amen, because we have a Bible. Consider God's purpose that we acknowledge him as our Lord and praise his name, amen. And so David wraps it all up after writing these things and saying these things because God gave him the opportunity to kill this giant. <laughs> and God to let little old David kill this Goliath. And yet he's been a servant and he's been a shepherd and he's taken care of God's sheep and oxen 
Yea, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Now, there's an important verse, too. I'm underlying that. Yeah, you're, again, modern man, your average schmuck today, looks at Jesus and says, Oh, Jesus was just the uh, a New York Yankee in King, Ar King Arthur's court. They, they want you to think, oh, Jesus was just an adept, like, and he was just smart like we are. He knew everything we knew, but he just pretended to be dumb and walked around the people like, you know, like a New York Yankee, in a, or I mean like a mm -hmm. northern Yankee in King yeah. Arthur's court, you know. No, 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 that, was, that is not what Jesus did. No, you're wrong. Because, number one, we're not that smart. <laughs> and you're stupid to think you're, to think you're that smart. And that you'd think that's all Jesus did. No, no, no. Uh, here's David. How did David know that there was paths in the seas? Mm -hmm. Now, what do we call this today in modern world living? This is called shipping lanes. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many thousands of ships have sunk on reefs and coral? Because they did not know where the shipping lane was. But yet in the ocean there are shipping lanes. And of course they learned pretty soon and then to start using a lead weight at the bottom of a string. And, and they'd start lowering the thing and make sure the boat can get over whatever's down there. Because <laughs> for a long time they couldn't see. They didn't have sonar yet, you know. So they'd use a string and a lead weight to, to find those shipping lanes to get around in the sea. But see, they knew about it in the Bible. The Bible, that's what, see, science is way advantaged if they believe the Bible and read the Bible. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so, whatsoever passes through the paths of the sea. Mm -hmm. See, because there's paths in the sea. Amen? Yeah. God put them there so we can get around. And we have done this for centuries. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. And so all glory and praise needs to be to God for all these wonderful things that he's done and made for us. And, and he let us be his kings and queens on this earth with all these creatures on this earth. And we eat them and we use them for shoes. We use them for clothes. Hallelujah. He gets all the glory. Amen. So you can see why this is definitely a song for the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand by our heads in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Help us to love you and appreciate all that you have done for us. And never lose sight of that truth that mm -hmm. uh, we just have to humble ourselves and look to you for help. And thank you, Lord, that you do still help us. <laughs> you, still, you, still, you, you still hear our prayers and you still jump and come to our aid so that we can give you all the glory and the credit. And in Jesus' name we thank you and amen. amen.